Hey, good morning. We're in Thailand. I was here to follow a Vipassana meditation course. Um, it's, uh, I went to a very traditional 10 day course in the tradition of uh, Gwenka and I didn't even finish it. I left on day six. So this video is meant for you if you are orienting yourself, maybe you want to go to a Vipassana course, maybe you have been and you didn't like it and you want to know why, um, or maybe you do like Vipassana and you just like to get another perspective on it. So in this video I'll mainly focus on why I didn't like it and why it also might not resonate for you. So first of all, just when I got there, I noticed on day two already, I was feeling a little bit more depressed than usually. And I, I mean to say that usually I don't feel depressed and now I start feeling a little bit depressed inside. I wondered why and it was very obvious to me that I get a little bit depressed if I have to suppress my usual joy in life. So usually during throughout the days, I will laugh out loud, I will, I will sing spontaneously, a song comes up and during these days I just have to, oh shit, I'm singing, <laughs> you know, because we have to be quiet all the time. And I like to smile at people, but I'm not allowed to. I like to, I like to dance and I'm not allowed to. Um, there are so many little joys in life that I'm not allowed to do there and um, it's pretty natural to me that that makes you a little bit depressed. I can at least accept that part because the, the whole thing of only meditating has a goal, right? And the goal is enlightenment or liberation. I don't know exactly what that is, that's why I'm there. Um, and here's the problem with it. In Vipassana they say that it's a scientific method. So I have been to university, I have a little bit of an idea what scientific means. And to me it means that in this context at least they must have gotten some results in the past that have clearly proven to them that this meditation technique will lead you into enlightenment. They do have at least one result that I know of, which is um, the Buddha who sat under the Bodhi tree and got enlightened there. And it is said that he used this technique. And that's why we're practicing it in Vipassana courses. Now, do we know sure, do we know for sure that this is the technique that this Buddha used to get enlightened? I'm not sure, honestly, because that's a long time ago. And I don't think, I don't think that Mr. Gwenka, the, the guru uh, who's alive right now and who teaches the Vipassana students, I'm not sure if he has direct telepathic contact with the Buddha and knows for sure that this is the technique he practiced. And it's a long time ago, just like the Bible, it might have gotten delivered a little bit different throughout the years. But I would be pretty much um, convinced if some other people would have reached liberation too with this technique. So I went up to my teacher, um, I thought let's just ask some bold questions. And I asked her, um, is Guru Gwenka himself fully enlightened? And she said, well, enlightenment has four stages. And I am not exactly sure as to where he is now, but at least he has reached stage one. And I asked her as well, are you enlightened? And she said, um, no, I'm not, but I'm just further on the path so I can teach the people who come after me on the path. I mean, that does make sense but to me, but it does not make sense to me to keep saying to people that this is surely the path towards enlightenment and it's scientifically proved if actually it, I don't I don't see this as proved that's just what I'm saying and um, if I just assess it with my logical mind 
and maybe yeah as well my intuitive mind then what i would say is that if i know was god the all that is and I, then i would want to make like the most beautiful experience for myself in the sense of all the little parts of consciousness all the beings that exist in this um, reality then i would want to make the most beautiful fun experience for myself and that would not include suffer my way through years and years and years and years of meditation to get liberated from suffering. Does not make sense to me. If I would be, you know, the designer, which everyone says that I am, if I would be the designer, then I would design like a, a very fun journey in which your intuition can guide you by telling you, this is fun, this is what I want to do. And if you would just be guided by your excitement, then that should bring about enlightenment and liberation. And I don't even like the term liberation because it sounds so negative. It sounds as if there is something you need to be liberated of. And that just, I mean, that's negative, right? <laughs> uh, so I asked my teacher, um, I just asked her some question and I said, I'm curious to know, and she said, curiousness is something you need to be liberated of. To me, curiousness is like, oh, so delicious. I love it, curiousness. And also the mind seems to be something they want to be liberated of. And I don't feel like I want to be liberated of my mind. I like my mind. My mind does fun things. My mind will... Um, come up with jokes my mind comes up with inspiration it downloads beautiful inspiration to make all kinds of creations in life um, my mind has loving thoughts my mind has joyful thoughts and yes there's also suffering within me but I do notice throughout the years that there's less and less and less and less suffering and that most of the time I'm not suffering at all most of the time I'm enjoying the journey of life so what is it exactly that I want to be liberated of? For me, it was actually just curiousness about what this thing called enlightenment is that I went to this course. But I am honestly not willing to suffer my way through years and years of um, feeling the top of my head, and then, you know, going down and going up. And, and this is the Vipassana meditation technique. And it was just a little bit disappointing to me because I've been doing mindfulness meditation as well and to me this just sounds like a body scan and I love the body scan it's very relaxing but it seems out of balance to me to be doing body scans 10 hours a day <laughs> days and days after end one of the first goals you can reach with Vipassana meditation is equanimity. And I asked myself, do I actually want to reach that goal? And my answer is no, I don't want to become equanimous. I don't understand why we would have this whole experience if it's not for, you know, experiencing actually. And um, through meditating 10 hours a day every day, you might be able to numb yourself out, to turn yourself into a brain dead uh, meditator. And this just seems like suppression to me. I don't want to suppress myself, I want to live myself. Then the last thing is just um, the amount of limiting beliefs that's there. Sometimes we had to watch discourses of Mr. Guenka and sometimes he would say, kind of as a joke, well, some people come here and they think they get enlightened within 10 days. And then you hear everyone on the video is listening to the discourse that he's giving. You hear them laugh. And also people um, on the retreat where I was kind of giggled, like, oh, <laughs> that's not possible. Um, well, it's not possible. I just have a little bit of an allergy against any teacher will tell you this or that is not possible. Because in my vision, um, 
I just don't like to listen to limiting beliefs and it's it's just a limiting belief because it is possible that you wake up tomorrow and suddenly you're enlightened whatever that even means but it's so possible and I came there not thinking that I don't I don't have an expectation that 100% sure I will get enlightened within a 10 day meditation course but um, at least there is a possibility I don't shut my mind off for that possibility all right so I was sure that I wanted to leave at some point uh, end of day five and um, the funny thing is that what kept me from leaving um, at the first moment is just two things first of all there is a little bit of a idea there that if you quit that you're kind of weak so people very easily assume I came back from the meditation retreat after and I told some friends I went away from this meditation course and people very readily assume that I was just not able to um, to fulfill it so they will say yes I know it's tough and some will even give you a little bit of a vibe of oh I'm sorry for you that you couldn't but um, even though it wasn't that I couldn't it was more that I very very strongly felt that there was a higher purpose for the time and I could use it better to to make something awesome or you know enjoy my days even even if it was that it was too tough for me it's just that how do I explain I just want to say that it's kind of sad that um, maybe there are more people there who don't dare to leave because they don't want to be seen as weak and there's such strong conformism there as well it's the second thing that I want to mention um, everyone is doing the same you're not supposed to talk with each other so you can't really exchange uh, your ideas upon what's happening and um, it's just a little bit hard to go against the stream there and really just leave and that was actually what made it a pretty good experience for me in the end because it was a beautiful experience for me to uh, to do say there is a higher use for my time and I do want to leave regardless of how the people react, regardless of whether they are disappointed or whether my friends find me weak and won't understand my reasons. Um, I, just, I just feel strongly I have to leave. And to me that was the most beautiful gift I got out of it, to, to really follow my own inner guidance here. And if I would have meditated so much in my life that I would have become equanimous, I wouldn't have been able to feel my inner guidance. So that's that's awesome. I still have my inner guidance. I got out alive. <laughs> um, just a little, you know, disclaimer or something. I don't want to say that Vipassana is a bad thing. If you feel excited about checking it out or about going on your fifth retreat, go do it. Um, I'm just saying it's not for me and it might not resonate with more people so this video is just for everyone who is looking for some recognition or some more insight on what might be the disadvantages of Vipassana meditation. If it works for you it works and that's great. If it doesn't um, this might be why. Alright, um, I do make meditations myself, <laughs> guided meditations. They are creative visualization journeys often um, or they often focus on uh, nourishing the mind with positive thoughts, um, reprogramming yourself to be, um, to be more happy in life. If you want to check them out, you can. I'll put some links like in the description box or in the video wherever I can put them. <laughs> if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and I, in the future I will make some meditation albums, they will be on my website. Mm. And also if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. You can go to 
uh, inevitablebliss.com slash askariel and you can ask me questions on uh, personal development, spirituality, happiness, lifestyle choices, uh, personal questions are also welcome and I might make a video about it so if you're curious about something, if you still have your curiousness, <laughs> go ahead <laughs> and I wish you a really good day.